Have you heard of grace and oppression? Many perceive Myanmar people as being graceful and a long-term dictatorship. But the worst in these days comes to me is grieving and a glamour. Why do I say grieving and a glamour? The international community applauded us. We have no bloodshed transitions after the 2010 election. But we succeeded. That's the glamour. But I feel we are grieving. Why? We are grieving because we are handicapped as a society. Many of our people actually don't live in the real world. They live in virtual world. Let me explain. There are altogether three things that create our virtual world. They are censorship, propaganda, low quality or ineffective education. Let me start with the censorship. If you imagine a censorship in a dictatorship, you would imagine it is all about controlling the politics, political censorship. We certainly have that. But the censorship goes way beyond. It controls the way people live, what our culture is supposed to be. It controls and destroys human creativity. I started writing at the age of 16, so I have been gone through quite a few generations of the press scrutiny book. In the 1980s, it will take up to two years to get permission to publish a novel. It took me nearly 12 years to get some of my short stories got published as they were written. The press scrutiny board would ask for the removal of the paragraphs or the whole articles or short stories or take off the whole top short stories. So we will ink over either black or the silver ink over the paragraphs or glue facing pages together or rip out all the pages. But in 1990s, they improved their process. We need to submit even before printing every manuscript, including the advertisement pages. For example, there should be no red color for illustrating the university compound as it could be imagined as killing the students. Also, under the name of maintaining national culture, there should be no earrings on the famous footballer David Beckham. We should take off these earrings with Photoshop. All of us need to submit hard copies of the any manuscripts to the press scrutiny board in Yango that is very hard for survival of the weekly papers from the ethnic minority areas. No email, no poster charges. For that reason, we cannot learn and understand each other among our ethnic groups via literature or media. Then, it is not the end of the censorship. Even with the permission, there is so much editing. Some writers decided not to publish because of the immense and irrational editing by the censorship board. It's totally destroyed and controls our creativity. Then, if a writer got arrested or got put under the blacklist, their pen names cannot be printed. Because of my imprisonment, my first novel took nearly a decade to get published. And even it gets more ridiculous. The name of the blacklisted writers cannot be published, even in something like obituary announcements of the family members. So I would like to say the censorship is like blinders or blinkers for our eyes, like horses. It's really just show what the dictator wanted us to see. Nothing about our 
society itself, or rest of the world. After nearly half a century of the censorship period, some things happen. Even though there is no more censorship vote now, we all have censors. For example, like some short story writers, they're not writing about some taboo topics in their short stories. For example, like lens confiscations by the military, life affairs of the two different religious believers. We all censor each other, whatever we do or say things that are forbidden. The second thing is propaganda. Propaganda is like green spectacles for our virtual world. In olden days, we think our society is green, fresh, and worthy because of these green spectacles, even though the reality is it is so gray, dry, and not worthy. The propaganda, socialist government, military government, so-called reform governments, after governments and governments, they use state's own media to distribute serious propaganda. And propaganda focus on everything. Since there is, at that time, you know, in socialist days, we were told we were the luckiest people on earth. Burma is, has most resources. Our culture is the best. Out there in the foreign countries, people eat raw meat, raw fish, barbarians. The 15 minutes international news segments in the state's television, it shows wars, people suffering, starving in Africa, and horrible storms. And there is only one TV channel in these days. There is no independent private media since 1962 till early 2000s. After 1988, it gets worse. Because only the, the license to practice the media is totally controlled by the Ministry of Information. And also because only the family members of the military generals and the cronies get license. Private media is not truly private is another way of propaganda channel. After 1988, people started rely on XI radio stations like Radio Free Asia, Democratic Voice of Burma. But even with that, they are not agenda free in other directions. So, after more than half century long propaganda, people think all journalism is propaganda. And people also try to propagand each other. Propaganda is really infectious. That's why even in these days, we do serious propaganda each other but not to inform, interpret, and investigate the issues properly. That's why we still live in the virtual world. Let's move to my third observation. Our education system. Sadly, we destroy our education system. Students do not need to learn at university or high school. Our people do not know what they don't know and how far or how much they don't know. At university and school, high schools, people do not need learning because you know the teachers, they got pretty low salary compared to the other, other intellectual staff and their duties mainly include protecting the school buildings, taking roll call, and attending the meeting with the local authority how to pro handle the students' protests. So they don't teach at schools, at classes. They just teach 
the students at their private tuitions. So students need no learning. They just need tuition fees to the right teachers. At high school, students do parallel learning, memorization without thinking. Even they do not need to memorize the whole curriculum, only the part that might be in the exams. That way of no learning has become normal among the students and parents. That's why what they expect from the school is not education, but certificates. After years and years of this practice, we became pretty much intellectually blind. You know, the censorship and propaganda can make us blind, but even a blind person can manage their own life if there is the intellectual vision. Since because of the educations, we are intellectually blind, we are handicapped. So, how intellectually blind people could do? We just use illogical decisions, whatever the daily life province has been came up. We really cannot use any logical way of thinking since the education has blocked our intellectual critical thinking. And we also use emotions as a tool for facing the daily life challenges. When we face the information we cannot process, we react badly. We, instead of considering the issues, we have outbursts. For that reason, after years and years, we still cannot get out of this virtual war. So how we should do to get out of this virtual war? We seriously do need educational reform in order to strengthen our people's knowledge and critical thinking. We also do need to protect and promote freedom of expression for every single person of our society. We seriously do need freedom of expression as to respect the freedom of expression as our collective rights. And then, in order to have that kind of understanding, we do need open our minds, our intellects, open to the other people's intellectual point of view to have and to guarantee every single person have an equal chance to express their vision, beliefs, and dreams without having any legal or physical threat. And then finally, we can find out how much suffering we all share and how we can actually understand each other. Only by then, we can take off our virtual reality blindness. And then we can truly be graceful. Thank you.